right, flipping the script on the fried egg here. I'm going to interview you, man. Um, but anyways, I thought it'd be good just to get on mic with you, talk about you know our time together. And I mean, truthfully, for those that might not know Andy, he is one of the best mid-ams in the state. I don't know about that. I knew you were going to be modest, but you are. Mediocre. <laughs> you are. I mean, you still can compete, and that's kind of the cool thing why I want to talk about this a little bit. I think this is a cool conversation because all your time in the fried egg and all the work you put in the travel you do, you don't play a lot, yeah. right? No. But you can still go out with hickory clubs and shoot 68. Like, yeah. I'm pretty fascinated by that. It's, it's, uh, it's taken a long time to get to here. So, I mean... Well, so if you could, just kind of speak on that a little bit. Like, how do you feel like your game can still stay competitive? I mean, you feel like you can compete still, right? Yeah, I can hang. Yeah. If, I, if I got to practice a lot, I, can, I think I can really compete. If well, I, I feel like I can, I can make cuts at state AMs without practicing. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the big thing, though, is how many people fall in that trap? Like, oh, if I'm not working, I don't practice, and they start using that as an excuse. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, you know, I haven't practiced at all, I can't play. Like, yeah. That's why this is a good conversation, I think, because you're the epitome of that. You don't really work at it, and you still are hanging with some of the top players in the state. And, you know, we made it to the U.S. Med Am for those that might not know who you are. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest thing is that my perception for how I play golf and the way I think about golf has is, is changed a lot from when I was in high school or when I was in college or even right after college competing in, in amateur events. Is like I don't put a lot of pressure on myself anymore. I don't. I try and keep expectations out of it. I start to realize, like, you know, everybody stinks at golf. Like, you know, the pros stink at golf at some, at, to a certain extent, like, to their standards. Everybody has their standards. Mm -hmm. And if you realize, like, bad shots are part of the game, like, you see bad shots like Ian Poulter shanks balls off of uh, par threes all the time. He's the 28th ranked player in the world. <laughs> like, you know, bad shots happen. It's about keeping yourself in it and really – you know, getting around the golf course without making catastrophic mistakes or taking yourself out of it. Because like, that's something I've really learned is like, you know, there's all golf rounds in golf. Like you play really special rounds where everything works for 18 holes every once in a while. Most rounds you have highs and lows where almost always there's a three hole stretch that you really scrape it around. And, and that three hole stretch and how you react after it are, is the most important part of, of tournament golf is is dealing with that stretch of golf where you're not really swinging perfectly mm -hmm. so that's I think really mentally has been the biggest change is just maturing and, and understanding you know the highs and lows of a round so how do you think that I mean is that different from when you were younger than in competing yeah for sure I'd put way more pressure on myself I would think that every shot meant the world and every shot in golf is very big like you mm -hmm. can't you know but all you can do at the end of the day is like say hey I tried my hardest on that shot I I went through my routine I tried to hit the shot you know I might have made a mistake with like how I thought about hitting the shot mm -hmm. but like at the end of the day like execution errors are perfectly fine it's the the mental errors and the decision-making errors that really cost you so if you think about golf the right way and you don't take yourself out of it, say you have a bad stretch of holes, if you play three holes, five over, it's okay at a lot of levels. At mm -hmm. some levels, at the highest levels, it's going to hurt you. But like, you know, in qualifiers especially, like understanding, like something that's changed for me is that I used to like always think about numbers and now I don't think about numbers. And all I think about is like, am I playing well? Mm -hmm. Like if I play well, I'm gonna probably be near the top of a qualifier, whether it's a state am or a, a mid am a qualifier. If I play good, I should be fine. And if I play average, like that's where I'm gonna be around it. But like, you can't worry about numbers. You just have to be worried about how you're playing because like sometimes you can shoot a high score, but you know you played well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get in and you'll see all the numbers are high. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, one thing I talk about with players all the time is, like, you know, after you hit a bad shot, you basically have two roads you can go down. You can start thinking more technically, trying harder to get it back, but that's more what you're talking about with, like, thinking about numbers. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I just messed that up. Like, I got to really do something special in this yeah. next one. But, so you're saying, like, you just kind of learn to let that go. And yeah. just kind of stick into what you're doing. Exactly. Like, pressing in golf is, like, sometimes it can work, but, like, mm. the percentage is, like, Aren't, aren't gonna work and I mean I had a lot of trouble getting into the mid-am like the US mid-am 
for a long time because I was constantly thinking about numbers. Hmm. And, um, you know, the year before I qualified, I was two under with uh, two holes left to play, like in great shape. And I finished double double. Mm -hmm. And it was just like an agonizing feeling because I played in Indianapolis. I had a four hour drive back home. And, and, at that point, I realized like I was so number focused. Mm -hmm. I hit the fairway on both those holes and just like puked all over myself. And if I wasn't thinking about numbers and I wasn't, you know, I started to think about like playing in the US Mid Am. And that, like not getting ahead of yourself, everybody talks about staying in the moment. It's really hard, but like mm -hmm. the way I, I think about that now is like, you know, everybody says stay in the moment, but nobody right. says like, how do you stay in the moment? Right. Like for me, I don't think about numbers like if I as hard as it is if I can not even know what I'm shooting it's like unbelievably refreshing like <laughs> I hate when people keep my score and tell me what I shot yeah, yeah. and I'm because like I've just tried to put that away and I just focus on playing good golf like mm -hmm. hitting a solid shot and it's really hard because I struggled with that like for a long time is figuring out how to do that mm -hmm. but since I've been able to put it away I've played a lot better golf and you know, not being as results oriented and more process focused on like how you're doing it. So I finished double double the next year. I kind of was playing like a, a round where nothing was really working. I wasn't hitting the ball great. I wasn't making any putts, but I was like hanging in there. Mm -hmm. I was, I think I was one over even all of a sudden, like I hit a, a good drive and I hit a wedge to like six inches on like the 12th hole and everything shifted. Like mm -hmm. I started really, really playing well. Some putts didn't go in, but I was really, you know, I felt like I was playing well after playing pretty average. And this is what goes to like this flow mm -hmm. of a round. Like there was a stretch in that round where I didn't play well, but I kept making pars. I kept saving, getting up and down, limiting mistakes to bogeys and, um, you know, then I started to play, I played really great golf for the last seven holes. And I birdied, I think, four of the last seven. The, I think I birdied three of the last four holes. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I shot 69 and I was in. Like, and when you think about that round, it was like, it had its bad stretches, it had, but it has really good stretches, but never was I fixated on the number or qualifying for US Mid-Am. And mm -hmm. sure enough, there I was in, you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, golf's just not this idealistic, hit the fairway, hit the green, and just coast through it. Yeah. I mean, and you're, like, now with the fried eggs blowing up, I mean, you're on tour a lot. Yes. And you're seeing these guys firsthand. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often do you just see that cookie cutter around or what people think golf is? I, I wrote an article about, I, I always love watching a group of players for all 18 holes. Mm -hmm. And I watched... Um, Blaine Barber, I, I, I forgot exactly what the pairing was, but Blaine Barber was playing really great golf. And sure enough, like, you know, he, was, he had birdie looks on every hole, but then he went through a little stretch, like, just like I go through where he hit some bad, loose shots. He got up and down on one hole. One hole, though, he made a big mistake, made a double. You know, he three-putted another green. All of a sudden, you see these things t piling up. And you look at it over the course of a tournament, I watched another round of this. Like in just two rounds, I, I saw like six shots that he kind of just fumbled away. And it was, it's all like where he didn't hit good approaches and he hit some loose execution errors. Mm -hmm. But then where just limiting the damage and, and not getting up and down, whether it be he, those six shots in two rounds were the difference between him and Siwoo Kim who won. And I went and watched Siwoo Kim on the final day, and he was getting up and down from everywhere. Mm -hmm. He wasn't hitting the ball that great, but like when he was in trouble, he, he limited the damage, he got up and down. And, and it's not like winning and playing great golf is all, it's not always like beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, it, so with my game, like I think a lot about like, okay, like my ball striking is usually pretty consistent. So if I'm gonna practice before something, I'm gonna practice like my short game and putting. Mm. Cause I know that's like the stuff that like, you really gotta have sharp. Um, because like, I, I can go hit the ball pretty well after not playing for three weeks. Right. But you know, usually around the greens, it's a disaster. Yeah. So. so I think the big question, and the reason I wanted to do this is you and I have been together for like eight years. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel like you can always hit the ball like well? I, so I think it's just like something like I think 
it's really hard to make changes in your golf swing. Mm -hmm. Like you, when you make a, the smallest change, it feels like a monumental change. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things, and you see it on tours, like consistency and having a, a long-term look at your golf game versus a short-term look, like the short-term game versus the long-term like approach where you're constantly working towards where your swing wants to be. Mm -hmm. And I think like we've gotten to a point where I know, and I can self-correct, I know typically when I hit a bad shot what was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually like it comes down to setup. Like I know how to move my body, I know how to, how to swing the club, mm -hmm. but like for me the hardest thing without playing is setup. So it's always usually setup that nobody talks about is like where the error is, but everybody has to swing their own way. Mm -hmm. They have to be comfortable with it. And I think having a coach for a long time is so beneficial because you learn over time. Like you're not building a relationship, you're 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 kind of building on your relationship that you've established. And over time it, it, it just you start to understand your swing more and more rather than going to somebody with a new approach. I mean and you see it on tours like you know, the outside of Tiger, Tiger's, you know, been able to, but he was the greatest player of all time, right. but like, he's been able to work with a lot of coaches, but like, you see other guys that have really long staying power and really great success. Most of them have like one coach and you, what you see is when people switch or try and chase something, mm -hmm. they rarely succeed in chasing. Like, I think something like a perfect example is like, uh, Luke Donald with, he chased distance and mm -hmm. switched coaches and you know, plummeted. Martin Keimer tried to start to hit a, a uh, draw to because he was a fade player. I mean, you're talking about a two-time cha major champion trying to make and number a change. one in the world. He got yeah. to yeah, absolutely to, trying to make a change to fit Augusta, and he fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Like playing your understanding your game and understanding your swing and what you do really well. Like it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's not about playing perfect golf. Right. It's about playing your golf and understanding. You know, understanding your game where you miss it. How do you get around a golf course, right. not how, you know, Tiger Woods or somebody else gets around a golf course? Well, and the thing is, is, you know, and I've, we've talked a lot about this, is, like, swings don't change. Like, motor movement does not change that yeah. much. You know, and Tiger, you can look through all of his swings, through all the coaches he had. Mostly what changed is, like, Foley had him in a whole different setup. Mm -hmm. But his move was the exact same. Like, I mean, the club might have pointed, like, that much different mm -hmm. on some of these. But if you really study these, he moved the same. Yeah. So, like you said, I mean, just knowing the setup and how that's going to affect how the club moves, I think is huge. And just knowing, okay, this is what I need to do. Yeah. And not chasing something, I think, is so important. So, like you said, the long-term standing guys, I mean, how many number ones fell off from chasing something? Lee Westwood, Martin Keimer, mm -hmm. McDowell. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't really know their history per se, but I know they all switched what they were doing and tried something different. And I think, like, Patrick Reed's a good example of a guy, and I think – so he had a deficiency. He could not, in competition, he did not feel comfortable to move the ball left to right. And at, if you want to play the highest level of mm -hmm. golf, like a, a major champion level, you need to do that. But like he worked at that for a really long time. He didn't switch instructors to go do that, but he, he kept working at mm -hmm. that and he improved over time. You know, he's still more comfortable moving the ball right to left, but he figured out a way to move it left to right. Mm -hmm. But it took time. You know, right. it took him a long time, like, you know, from you can't 20 snap to, your fingers yeah, and do exactly. it. Yeah, right. exactly. It, it, it built in, like, you look at his major championship performance, everybody always wonder why didn't he play well? Why isn't he playing well? And it's like, well, he doesn't have a shot that's really needed when you get into tough competition. And I think from my game, I've been a predominantly right to left ball flight player, and it's always driven me nuts. Right. Like, and, you know, we didn't solve that in, like, the first lesson. We didn't right. solve it in the first year. We didn't solve it in the first two years. But, like, now I feel like I can move the ball left to right when I want to. And I'm, I know where the ball is missing. And it's over time we got there. Right. And it's like you can't make, like, a wholesale change. Right. And it, it can't it, – nothing changes overnight. Right. It takes a lot of time. And I don't think it will ever truly go away either. Yeah. I mean, you're going to every once in a while, I mean – just for laughs, I mean, the story of the mid am. Yeah. You know, when you're left of the road and the bus tried to pick us up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's always a fun one. I mean, then, you know, the old joke with, you know, Price and Bohr about the, you know, the yeah. laughs and stuff. I mean, you know, those things are always there. They don't go away. Yeah. You know, I don't think a lot of people understand that is that, 
you know, motion doesn't change. We can rewrite new patterns a little bit, but I mean, that same miss, Tiger's miss is the same today as it was when he was 17 years old. Yeah. You know, it's just understanding that and just not putting so much stock into what's wrong. Yeah. You know, this is what I need to do to get it back on track and going there. Cause I mean, that's, you do such a good job with that. It's like, all right, I know, I know what I need to do. I got it. And See, then that, you work on a short game and putting, which is what matters. I mean, how many people sit on the range and just beat balls trying to search for something that can't be perfected? That's it. I mean, David Duvall had like one of the greatest quotes ever when somebody asks him about like how much he hits range balls he's like you know when I'm in a really good groove I don't want to hit them because I don't want to get out of the groove and when I'm in a really bad swing place I don't want to hit them because I don't want to reinforce with the bad <laughs> so yeah. he's like I'd never really beat balls yeah and that I mean you're talking about one of the greatest players of this gener uh, you know of maybe not this generation the generation before now mm -hmm. um, is it, and I think that's like a a very you know, for me, it's a good way. Like I never have like been good at hitting range balls. I almost feel like I'm bad at hitting range balls. <laughs> I'm better at like playing golf. So I, I try good. like starting to understand yourself and what works for you is is important. I mean that mid amp story is a perfect example of like understanding tournament golf and competition. Right. And like that was a sent situation where I started that tournament off really great, and I was a I was one under. For a while, I missed a short putt, made a double, bogey the next two, and I hit this drive left of left, like I'm left of a road. Luckily, it wasn't <laughs> out of bounds. And like, you know, things were spiraling right. completely and, out and of control. I mean, the fact that literally the bus driver stopped and yeah. asked if you needed a ride was pretty priceless. <laughs> it was, well, it was it was a great moment though, right. because like what happened was that, that moment and like we laughed. Right. Like right. It, it reset. Like the whole thing, like it was getting to a situation where it, I don't think if that bus doesn't stop, I, I think I would have played really bad the rest of the round. <laughs> but the bus stopping like got me out of this like spiraling out of control moment. Right. And then I managed to save. So I, you know, I played, what was it? Four holes, five over, mm -hmm. three, four holes, five over. Right. And you know, usually, the, and this is, goes to the testament of what it, we were talking about earlier, but I part, I end up making a par on that first hole, and then I played in one under or two under. Like and two, I, right? yeah. yeah, and I ended up shooting a 74 on the tough course on a really tough, windy day, and I'm like in like T30th after right. the first, first round. Um, you know, the next day was a great learning experience because, you know, I, I got off to a really bad start, but I, you know, I, I kind of stemmed the tide and I'm going along and I make a birdie on the 10th hole and I all of a sudden like in my head, it's just like every step of golf is a learning process. Right. In my head, I started thinking about match play. Right. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to get in a match play. I just got to keep, right. I got to play like moderate golf the rest of the way. Sure enough, I just like puke all over myself right. the rest of the way in, just like the two years before in the qualifier. Mm -hmm. And because I started to think ahead, yeah. it's like live in the moment, but you have to go through those really bad experiences in golf, I think to get to where you want to be because right. like those bad experiences teach you you know there I, I forgot whose quote it is you never learn anything from winning you learn from losing right and like those experiences are what build you and and help you the next time you're in similar situations yeah so i mean and that that all goes back to like self-image you know mm -hmm. we've had those talks it's like you know you can, everybody to a point gets to that spot where they're like oh man, they kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel and it, it almost switches to like not what you were doing to get there. It's also like kind of don't screw this yeah. up. You know, like if we just cruise, we're in the match play instead of, you know, like you said, at that point you made that birdie. I think that, that bogey really pissed you off and that was the, I think like I the easiest double. double and the easiest hole in the course. You hit yeah. that bunker yeah. and then that just is kind of when you're like saw it slipping away and then, you know, but again, though, that's that, that learning experience. And then after, I remember you saying, like, I know I can be here. Yeah, you know, so that's a total self-image change in a in a believer, and that's that's really the dictator between performance. I mean, at that level, it's not your swing was a little off plane. No, you know what I mean. And that's what I'm trying to help golfers get out of is it's not this like got to get back to the range and work on that because that wasn't what the shift was. It was like, oh man, like I might be a match play, and all of a sudden you lost your thought process for a little bit, and then kind of let it spiral, and the next thing you know, it's like we're done, we're out of it. Well, I think that's like comfort, <clears throat> right? Is so much of playing good golf, and you see it at the professional level, especially as you get really great college players, a lot of times struggle when they get to the web.com tour because it's a different 
golf and they're a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. because they they're playing with older guys they're playing with guys they've watched on tv they've been playing with guys that have won on the pga tour and they're uncomfortable but then like you know you look at them halfway through the year and a lot of times it, they get comfortable and all of a sudden that's the guy that dominated in college mm -hmm. or that's the guy that dominated in high school going to college um i think when you then look at the pga tour it's the same thing like you know these rookies they get up there it's really tough for them to get accl acclimated really quickly and they they have pressure because there's limited starts but like it's so much about being comfortable on the golf course and i think a lot of it is like not being technical is really important mm -hmm. for that because like you have to if you've gotten there you got there for a reason like get out there and just swing and be you don't try and like think about what you need to do and just relax get comfortable over the ball and, and just swing the club and wherever it goes it's fine right yeah i mean so on the tour like when you see these guys in the practice rounds and stuff like i just haven't spent a whole lot of time out there so I, like you know it's nice to get somebody who's an insider you know and writing about this stuff and but i mean what like what do you notice when they do practice rounds and stuff like that i mean do you see a lot of guys out there doing technical drills or anything no. like that i mean like you see them on the range working on stuff not huge stuff like mm -hmm. i mean the joke's always like whoever's beating balls the latest on a major wednesday is the guy that you don't want any part of because <laughs> like it's like kind of the worst thing you need to be the all these guys like i think like one of the things i've kind of kind of come to realize with like tour players is uh bill simmons and zach Lowe talk all the time about players in the nba that are like the three-point gunners like nick young and mm -hmm. and jason terry and and uh you know people that just come down the floor and shoot these irrational confidence guys mm -hmm. like the pga tour is a lot like that like these guys have like irrational confidence in themselves like right. you can talk to them and be like you know like what happened on this well like i just got a terrible bounce like they never hit bad shots in their mind yeah. and i think that confidence is like the biggest thing so like in practice rounds you're seeing them they just work on shots mm -hmm. you know they hit their shots if they hit a like you never see them like slamming clubs like worried about stuff like if they're hitting they're hitting a ton of shots around the greens they're hitting shots from around the greens from like if the pins over on the right side of the green they're hitting shots from short side and right mm -hmm. because they they think okay this is you know something they're trying to see how the ball reacts they're hitting putts from different spots um you know they work on pace a lot like you see them hitting longer putts because they want to see how the ball rolls on that green and how an uphill putt reacts. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see them, like, you know, they, they don't have their instructor behind them saying, like, hey, am I on plane? Like, am I taking this away the right, right. way? Um, and I think that, that's, like, the big thing is they're, they're more thinking about, like, how am I going to play this hole? Where do I want to miss? You know, like, these things. Like, that's, I mean, we're missing in the right spot is so much... Right so valuable in golf yeah you know um this is a little off topic but it relates i mean so like i watch a lot of those 30 for 30s you know mm -hmm. the bad boys one i'm a detroit guy yeah but i remember you know one of the big moments it was pistons bowls and it was down to the wire and chuck daly brings him into the huddle and it just takes the whiteboard and races everything he's like if you don't know this by now we're not meant to win yes you know so like that's kind of what you're saying if you're not prepared at that moment or if you're trying to do last minute adjustments it's like some something's wrong you, you, you're gonna have a hard time in that tournament like if you're not prepared you know and that's the whole point is like how do we get prepared and mm -hmm. you know so i beg your point there but so what do you see then as the difference and i think you hit it perfect the confidence but yeah. what's the difference between the tour players and the web players because i will never buy the fact that somebody's swing is better that's why they're on the it's pj versus a lot web. i mean it's experience and it's confidence like mm -hmm. i mean it's comfort it's a lot of things um it's the way they eliminate bogeys. Like, the, that's like, I mean, where they miss is so huge. I mean, you look at the way Jordan Spieth plays Augusta, and like, for the most part, like, he doesn't make, he makes execution errors. He doesn't make mental errors. Like, I think they understand their game. Like, they understand who they are, and they're not trying to be somebody else. Like, mm -hmm. I think, like, that's something, like, if you talk to, um, anybody out there they they aren't saying like well if i could just hit it like tiger i would right. be like they 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 understand that they're you know i'm mackenzie hughes and i play like mackenzie hughes yeah. not i'm 
I, you know, I'm trying to be tight. And I think with the web, like it's confidence, it's opportunity. It's really hard to get to the PGA tour. It's really hard to get to the web tour mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of time. Like, I think like one of the things that's that social media and exposure what has made players more popular at younger ages now. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, we've seen this, this rage, uh, like this trend of phenoms, like, but like, to get to the PGA Tour at age 23, you have to be like exceptional. Like I like looking at players like Kevin Kisner more. Kevin Kisner was a great college player, mm -hmm. all American at Georgia, four year like stud. But you look at his game, he's, you know, he's not that long off the tee, really good iron player, really good short game, really good putter, but like he's not like exceptional in any of those categories. And it took him a long time to get to the PGA Tour. He gets to the PGA Tour, he gets back down to the web, or he has a great year then, and he's, you know, but then he has another bad year. And that, but now you look at Kevin Kisner and his successes, like he's like a top 60 player in every single strokes game category. Mm -hmm. So he, he's a above average driver of the ball, above average approach player, above average short game, above average putter. So like you put that together and that's, but that takes a lot longer to get there. Right. And versus John Rahm, who, you know, he's one of the longest players on tour and he's a great putter. Like, it's hard to be bad when you're those two things. Right. But, like, for guys that – Kevin Kisner doesn't try and be John Rahm. You know, right. he didn't look and say, like, I need to be more like – he knew that he's, like, a great all-around player. And it, so it takes a little bit more time when you, you're an all-around player. But, like, you know, John Rahm's a, you know, generational talent. Mm -hmm. Right. Like Kevin Kisner's a very, very, very good pro. Right. Right, right. All right, so, I mean, just lastly, like, if there's one thing you've learned from, you know, the egg or your time playing that you would teach to, like, younger players, if you just had, like, that one nugget you could leave everybody that you just feel like it's kind of changed your game. I think it goes not thinking about score and numbers. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's hard to do. It's so hard to do. But if you can just concentrate on, like, hey, how am I playing? Mm -hmm. Am I hitting good shots? Like, if you're hitting good shots... Like you're doing everything you can do. Like right. it could, the golf course could be playing really tough on mm -hmm. a day, and it's hard to have that lens if you go into an event saying like, "I need to shoot 76 or better." Like it could be, it could be windy. The rough could be up. It could be firm. Right. Like and you get all those three, and like 76 isn't the number that you need. It's mm -hmm. 79. But like if you're thinking 76, like all of a sudden you're taking yourself out of it. Like right. just focus on your game, and it's so hard to do. Like I. I struggled with it for so long. I still struggle with it. But like, if you can just focus on doing, like, what, how you're hitting the ball, how you're playing, am I playing smart? Am I not, you know, not trying to force the issue? Because like, that's something I've learned too. Is like, like, you never know when you're gonna make four birdies in a row. Mm. And usually, when you make four birdies in a row, you're not trying. Like, you're right. you're always trying to score as best you can. But like. If you think about it, like nothing extraordinary happened. You just happened to execute good shots and you may make a putt or two. Like, well, it's, and then lastly, to kind of build on that, I guess a little bit is, I mean, do you believe you can catch fire and shoot and make four birdies in a row? Yes. Because I think that's the thing that holds a lot of people back is they start counting bogeys because they don't believe they can catch fire. Mm -hmm. You know, where you just know, like, that's your game. I mean, you can rip off four or five birdies in a row. So it's like you don't have to stress as much. Like, okay, like I know this is a bogey is a part of it, but I'm just as likely to go three, four under in a stretch. That was, I played the State AM this year, and, like, I was hitting the ball really good. I felt so good about my game. Um, played great practice round. I just felt right. And I played the first round, and I, I shot 71, and I literally did not make anything. Like, I, every single hole, I was just tapping in for par mm -hmm. all day. It was one of the most maddening rounds of golf. Like, you know, I think I made a birdie on, on, a, on my last hole to shoot 71. And, the next, and I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play better. The next day, I start out with a three-putt bogey. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I miss <laughs> a short putt on the next hole. Right. But then I just, like, I ripped off. Uh, four straight birdies and all of a sudden it's like oh and now I'm seeing myself on the leaderboard in like the top 10 yeah I got some bad breaks coming in but like you know like you never know when that's going to happen mm -hmm. like and then like it's about like what you see I, I use this analogy on a, on a podcast once but like the difference between me and say like a web player like I play a lot with Vince India in the summers who's on the web mm -hmm. is like 
I rip off four birdies and like my, and this is what I'm working on now. My mental landscape changes to like, Oh, you, you got to watch out. <laughs> you know? So I, I think of myself, I'm like a snorkeler. I get under par, I get, a, I get floor under and my, my tube just starts gushing water in <laughs> and I got to come up for air. <laughs> like, so I'll make a couple bogeys and like the guys are unbelievable. Like your Nick Hardy's, your Vince India's, your, your tour players, like, they get under par and they just keep going. They're like yeah. a nuclear sub. So I'm a snorkeler, they're a nuclear sub. They just get down, mm -hmm. they keep going. The further deep, the deeper they get, the more comfortable they get. Right. And they're not thinking about like, oh, like what if I, I gotta protect this four under. They're thinking right. about how do I get to six. Well, and that's, that's the thing, and that's where I preach the self-image, and to me, that's the secret to everything, is it's like, self-image, it's like me to be here, you know, mm -hmm. so if it's, if it's like you to shoot 75, 76, and you're four under par, I mean, that's extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, now you're just looking at, like we talked about a bit, and it's like, how do I not screw this up? Mm -hmm. You know, and again, now everything changes, you might make a few bogeys, and then you're back up there, you're frustrated, but same note, you're comfortable. Yeah. You know, or like you said, these guys, it's like me to make birdies, and in those situations so they don't make that birdie they're upset you know, and it's, it goes back to like not thinking about score right like it's so hard to do but it's the key yeah it's like just worry about hitting shots mm -hmm. like and, and it's staying like everybody says stay in the moment and I think it's like the most cliched overused term but it, it's figuring out yourself how you can do it and there's no secret recipe mm. for me it's like if I can like not think about score and just think about, am I playing good golf? Mm -hmm. Like, am I hitting good shots? Like that's my way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. I appreciate it. If you guys don't know the fried egg, everybody follow it, subscribe to it. How many, I mean, you got to tell how many like subscribers you got now? I'm, I'm up, uh, I'm up over 20,000. pretty, so it's grown. It's, that's uh, wild, man. Like yeah. I, I was on the original, what, five? 10 10 i was yeah. the original 10 so yeah. i mean to it's, see that thing grow i mean it's good though i mean it's it's good stuff about the tour it's easy to read i like it because i don't have time you know the yeah. new baby at home so i don't have time to watch golf anymore i mean it takes a long time so like being able to read this and keep up with this stuff is good man so you're doing a good job with that but, that was the goal yeah. busy it's it's tough to stay in the know but it also like you know thoughtful stuff about like what happened you know yeah. jordan spieth he finished two out of the lead uh, two out of the playoff at the Masters. Yeah, he hit the tree on 18 twice. He made bogey. <laughs> that that's like the razor thin margin of winning and losing. Yeah, and it, it's it it applies to every level of golf. Whether you're trying to win your C flight of your club championship, or you're trying to you know win a college event or a pro event. Right. right. It, it's it's pretty nuts how you can look back at these micro moments in, in a round of golf, and and that's why it's so important to only make like execution errors rather than your your decision errors and like getting out of your plan yeah cool man yeah i appreciate Thanks. it absolutely yeah